In this video, we're just going to look into what's meant by a tightening and loosening of monetary policy in a little bit more details, detail, sorry, and then have a look at answering a more challenging question related to the cash rate. So a loosening of monetary policy is basically when the RBA announces a lower target cash rate. So for example, if they lowered the target cash rate from 3.25 to 3%, to do this, the RBA decreases the amount charged slash paid on surpluses and deficits in exchange settlement accounts by the same amount. So if they, they would decrease, if the RBA decreased the cash rate to 3%, then they would decrease the amount that they that banks received on their exchange settlement accounts to 2.75% and charge them 3.25%. They then intervene through open market operations to ensure the actual cash rate is as close as possible to the new target cash rate by buying securities to increase liquidity. If they want to tighten monetary policy, so from say from 3.25 to 3.5%, they increase the amount charged or paid on surpluses and deficit exchange settlement account balances. So for example, on the amount charged, they would increase that from 3.5% to 3.75%. Um, and the amount that banks receive would increase from 3.3% um, 3 to 3.25%. They then intervene through open market operations to ensure the actual cash rate is close as possible to the target cash rate by selling securities to ensure the banks have less liquidity. So for example, expansionary policy, RBA buys government securities okay, because they want to increase the amount of cash the banks have. So the banks are going to be the ones selling the securities to get more cash and the cash rate will decrease. When we're implementing a contractionary policy, the RBA will sell government securities to make the banks less liquid and they would, the commercial banks will buy government securities and therefore become less liquid. Because they're getting a discount, that's their incentive to buy them, and that will cause the cash rate to increase. So here's a question basically stepping out the whole process from what the RBA do to increase the cash rate all the way to the influence that will have on the economy through economic growth and employment. So the question is, identify how the RBA will implement a loosening of monetary policy and reduce the cash rate in the economy. Explain the effect this will have on the commercial interest rates and the impact it will have on inflation through three of the five key transmission mechanisms. So this would be a, an eight mark question, for example, that requires quite a little bit of detail. So first thing, how do they operate a loosening of monetary policy? Step one, the RBA announces that they intend to raise interest rates. They increase the rate financial institutions are paid on surpluses in exchange settlement account balances. So they increase the target cash rate then what they do, they sell government securities to financial institutions. That's the most important thing at a discounted price because they need to make them buy them to make the actual cash rate as close as possible to the target rate. It's really important in your answers that you're talking about the actual cash rate and the target rate um, and comparing those two things. So they increase the target cash rate, they increase the amount banks are charged on their exchange settlement account deficits, then they sell government securities to bring the actual rate as close as possible to the target. This creates a shortage of cash in the short-term money market, less money to lend out to each other, and financial institutions limit the amount they lend, which increases the cash rate. As the cash rate is the base rate of all other interest rates, eventually the increased cash rate flows on to other types of borrowings and loans due to higher funding costs. So you've got to explain the process that occurs. Basically, with this higher funding costs, I haven't explained that yet, essentially what happens is when the cash rate's higher, it's the same thing as saying that banks' costs of production are higher if they um, have deficits in their exchange settlement accounts, and that eventually flows on to higher interest rates for commercial loans as well. So that's the first half of the question, explaining basically, first, they announced they increase in the target cash rate, they increase the rate they charge in their exchange settlement account balances, they sell government securities, this creates a shortage of cash, increases the cash rate, which flows on to other interest rates. Then you've basically got to explain the channels. Um, I should have said this is only two out of the. I should have said two out of the five, not three out of the five. So I'm only explaining two. So the first thing, the cost of credit channel, higher interest rates will discourage new borrowings, and is more costly to service debt. This will also increase the tendency for savings, as the interest received on savings is higher. Households will borrow less money to purchase goods and services, which will decrease consumption spending. Businesses are also less likely to invest um, because there's higher borrowing costs, so there's less investment spending. And because of this decrease in consumption and investment, there's less aggregate demand, reduced employment, and it decreases demand pull inflationary pressures. So you've got to make links to um, the incentive for businesses and consumers to, have to get out a loan for full marks. So it's really two marks for linking it to 
um, consumption spending through our reluctance to borrow and more likely to save and through investment spending slowing down because businesses don't want to borrow. In the cash flow channel, higher borrowing costs will decrease discretionary income, important term, of those with standard variable loans. Households with mortgages will have to spend more to repay the interest component of their mortgage and will decrease consumption and other products. Businesses also have less money to invest as they are paying more to service their old loans, so that will again decrease investment spending and overall reduce aggregate demand and demand pull inflationary pressures. It's main, you've just got to focus on demand. It's not important to link it to firms having higher cost of production if they've got interest rates, uh, sorry, very existing loans, and linking it to cost push inflation is less important. You could have talked about the exchange rate channel, the availability of credit, or the asset price channel as well, as long as you link it to inflation.